Salutations, this is Crazed Kitsune, aka Kumazi Taiyun, and welcome to Astrologian for Dummies Level 50. In this video, I'm going to go over the basics of how to play Astrologian so that you will be able to play it without being absolutely horrible. I will not be going over how to be an optimal, best out there Astrologian because I honestly don't know how to be one. Apologies for any clicking during the video, I, have suff I am currently suffering from an excess of phlegm. To spare you from the sound of that, I mute my mic. Anyway, how does one become an astrologian? Well, you need to have the Heavensward expansion and have completed the entire Realm Reborn main scenario so that you have entered Ishgard. Once you're there, there will, you'll be able to find a quest which will allow you to become Astrologian. I do believe that the quest is at the Athenaeum Astrologicum in uh, the Pillars, I think, is the area of the city. Astrologian is a healer, so their primary stat is Mind. So you want to get as much Mind as you can on all of your gear. Additionally, you're going to want as much Piety as you can get, because that gives you more MP. And more MP means you can cast more spells, which is always helpful. With the stats and how to become Astrologian out of the way, let's go look at the Astrologian's traits up to level 50. At level 20, you get Enhanced Mind, which gives you 8 more Mind, which makes your healing and attack magic more powerful. <coughs> and you also get Magic and Mend, which increases your base damage and HP restoration by 10%. <coughs> At 36, you get Enhanced Benefic, which adds a special trait to your Benefic spell. It grants a 15% chance that your next Benefic 2 will be a guaranteed critical hit. <coughs> this buff will last for 15 seconds or until you cast Benefic 2. At level 40, you get Enhanced Mind 2, which gives you 16 Mind. <coughs> and you get Magic and Mend 2, which increases your damage and HP restoration by 30%. And lastly, at 46, you get Combust Mastery, which upgrades Combust to Combust 2, meaning you don't need to have both on your hotbar. The better one just takes the place of the weaker one. On to skills. Since Astrologian is a pure job, they don't have any class actions. They also start at level 30. <coughs> so by default you have access to basically everything level 30 and above, except I believe Diurnal Sect, which is acquired through a job quest. <coughs> but your level 1 ability is Malefic, a global cooldown spell. Global cooldown is a 2.5 second wait. It also has a 2.5 second cast time, and at level 60 costs 353 MP. I unfortunately can't tell you how much it costs at level 50, because I am level 60. Malefic is a potency 150 attack spell. At level 2, you acquire Benefic, a global cooldown spell with a 2 second cast time. Heals get shorter cast times, generally. <coughs> they also get a longer range than attack spells. The cost of Benefic at level 60 is 353 MP. It is a 400 potency heal. This is your bread and butter heal. You're going to be using this a lot. It also gets the, uh, that additional effect we mentioned in the traits for, for enhanced Benefic. At level 4, you get Combust, a global cooldown instant cast spell. 
At level 60, it costs 353 MP, and it applies a, four, a potency 40 damage over time that lasts 18 seconds. At level 6, you get Light Speed, a two and a half minute cooldown. While for the once activated for the next 10 seconds, your spells all cost 25% less MP, take 2.5 seconds less time to cast, and your attack magic is 25% weaker. This is used for when you need to do major burst healing because you need to heal a lot and f you need to do it quickly. <laughs> the MP cost reduction is to allow you to use your higher power healing spells at a reduced cost and be able to throw them out faster. <laughs> Helios is acquired at level 10. It is your first AoE heal. It has a 15 yom radius around you, it is on global cooldown, and has a 2.5 second cast time. It costs 1060 MP at level 60, so it's not exactly cheap. <laughs> it has a potency 300 heal on you and everyone within a 15 yom radius of you. It may not be as strong as Benefic, but when your entire party is hurting, it's a better option. At level 12, you acquire Ascend. This is a global cooldown spell that has an 8 second cast time, and at level 60 costs 2,652 MP. It's a fairly large investment of MP dedicated to reviving a fallen party member. Or, well, anyone. If you find somebody who's been KO'd, you can put them back on their feet. They will be weakened, however. So, best to avoid death. <laughs> and that 8 second cast time? <laughs> yeah, there's a way around that that we'll be getting to in a little bit. At level 15, you acquire Essential Dignity, a 40 second recast ability. It has a potency of 400 for a cure, normally, but that potency increases the lower your target's HP is. The closer to dead they are, the harder this will heal especially if it gets a crit. <laughs> At level 26, you acquire Benefic 2, a global cooldown healing spell. It's a healing spell, so of course it has the 2 second cast time. At level 60, it costs 795 MP, so it's over twice the cost of Benefic, and it doesn't have twice the potency. It's a potency 650. <laughs> you do not replace Benefic with Benefic 2. You use Benefic 2 when you need to do a larger heal on a single target because you can't risk the time it takes to cast multiple benefics. <coughs> if it's safe to use Benefic 2 to heal them up, do it because it costs less MP. If you need a bigger heal faster, use Benefic 2. At level 30, you have Draw. A 30 second cooldown which allows you to draw one of six of your cards, or Arcanum, randomly. This card will be held and available to you for 30 seconds. When those 30 seconds run out, you will the card will disappear and draw will go on cooldown. The reason you were given 30 seconds to hold on to the card is so you can see what the card is and decide what whether or not to use it. <laughs> Through, I believe, a job quest, you get Diurnal Sect. This is a five second recast ability. <laughs> once, you have your once you have a sect, you should always be in a sect. Your sect increases the potency of your healing by 10%. Well, Diurnal Sect does, and it gives regen effects to your aspected skills. It also reduces the amount of enmity you generate, making it harder for you to take the enemies off of the tank with your healing. <laughs> this is very useful, as Astrologian is doing a lot re fairly frequently. <laughs> Every time you do anything to a party member, you get enmity. This shares its recast timer with Nocturnal Sect, and cannot be used at the same time as Nocturnal Sect. You will switch between them. <coughs> when, you 
We'll get to Nocturnal Sect in a bit. Also at level 30, you acquire Undraw, a 5 second cooldown ability which allows you to discard your drawn card if it's if you're not going to use it just so you can get drawn cooldown faster. Because there are times where you're going to get cards that are of no use. <laughs> sure, you could just slap them on somebody anyway, or you could get rid of them. Having covered all of these, I'm going to very quickly go over to the cards so I can discuss them and their uses and whether and point out that sometimes a card will be detrimental rather than helpful. <laughs> In general, your cards will help. The first card is Balance. Once applied to a party member for the next 30 seconds, they will do 20% more damage. <laughs> so you want to throw this on your DPS, especially the ones that have high potency skills, like a Samurai or a Dragoon. Next up, we have Bull. Once applied to a party member for the next 30 seconds, they take 20% reduced damage. <coughs> you want to be putting this on your tank. If you happen to draw this right before a tank buster's going to go off, whoopee for you. <laughs> next, we have Arrow. This is the first card that can potentially cause harm. <coughs> Once applied to a party member for the next 30 seconds, they have a 10% haste allowing them to use their skills and spells more often. <laughs> you may be wondering how this is a bad thing, it just increases their damage output. While this is true, the faster attack speed can result in physical DPS classes running out of TP faster than normal and causing them to deal less damage after that. The one DPS that always benefits from Arrow is Black Mage, because their MP is basically unlimited. <laughs> For them, having attack speed up is a DPS up, period. <laughs> Next we have Spear, which applies a 20 second buff, which reduces the cooldown of, well, your cooldown skills by 20%. This affects your off-global cooldowns, and this affects your global. If you know somebody is going to be using a bunch of cooldowns, or have just used them, throw this on. <laughs> Some off-global cooldowns, the ones that have particularly short cooldowns, aren't affected. Next up, we have Yur. This is a fairly situational card and should also not be used on a black mage because a black mage's rotation is based around when their MP is running out. Making their MP take longer to run out can confuse a black mage. Because Yur gives you a 50 potency MP regen for 15 seconds. It has its uses because you can use it on yourself if your MP is running starting to run low because a fight has just been taking a long time, or hasn't been going very well, or if you're in a larger party with another healer who you just had to revive, since their MP is empty, you can throw your on them to help them get some MP back so they're back to healing a little sooner, even though they're not healing quite as hard. And finally, we have Spire. Like Ewer, this is situational, but it's less situational because you're going to always have somebody who uses TP, because this is a TP regen for 15 seconds. This is especially glorious for warriors, because they use a lot of TP. With the cards covered, let's move on to the next skill, which is Aspected Benefic, acquired at level 34. It is a global cooldown instant cast spell. It costs 1060 MP at level 60. It has a 200 potency immediate cure, and depending on what sect you're in, it has differing effects. If you're in a diurnal sect, it applies a potency 140 regen for 18 seconds. You cannot have multiple aspected benefic regens on one person, even if you have two astrologians. If you've got two astrologians, you might as well each be in the different, each be in one of the sects. 
one for we diurnal for one, nocturnal for the other. If you are in nocturnal sect, then aspected benefit will apply a shield to the person equal to 250% of the HP it restored. This shield will last for 30 seconds or until the player has received enough damage to destroy the shield. And it cannot be stacked with Adloquium. Astrologian shields conflict with Scholar shields. If you've got a Scholar in your party, go Diurnal Sect because your shields will just knock theirs off and vice versa. Best to just have... Some, best to just not have that happen. At level 35, you can, you can obtain Royal Road, I believe through a class quest, or job quest. It is a 15 second cooldown ability. What this does is it allows you to sync your drawn card in order to buff the next card you use. If you sync a bowl or balance, which are damage effectors, it will increase the potency of your next card by 50%. If you sync an arrow or spear, which are which are basically speed cards, it will double the duration of the next card you play. If you sync Ewer or Spire, which are regenerators, it will have the potency of the next card you play, but apply it to everyone within a 15 yom radius of the target. Each of these has their each of these obviously have their uses. You could have a, a an expanded balance boosting everyone in the party's damage a little. You could have an extended arrow on a black mage, allowing them to attack faster for quite the long time, or you could have an enhanced bowl on the tank, making them take even less damage. It's all a matter of figuring out what would be good, and in my opinion, largely personal preference, as they're all decent options. I personally prefer Extended Royal Road if I can get it. Identifying when a card is not beneficial and whether or not it would be a good idea to Royal Road it is one of the key elements of being a, a good Astrologian. At level 40 through, I believe, a job quest, you acquire Spread. This is a 30 second recast ability. What this ability does is allow you to store your currently drawn card so you can use it later. Once stored, the card will stay there effectively forever. Once you use the card, spread goes on cooldown for 30 seconds. Royal Road will affect your spread card if you activate your spread card while you have Royal Road up. I like to store a Yor for emergencies in my spread in case I need MP recovery or I'm in a larger party and I have to revive the other healer. At level 42, you learn Aspected Helios. This is a global cooldown spell with a 3 second cast time. At level 60, it costs 1,326 MP, so this puppy isn't cheap. Its default potency is 200, but it goes down to 150 if you're in Nocturnal Sect. There's a reason for that. If you're in Diurnal Sect, it applies a, 40 po a potency 40 regen that lasts for 30 seconds, and it cannot be stacked with the regen of another Astrologian. But if you are in Nocturnal Sect, then you will apply a shield equal to 150% of the HP you restored with expected Helios, which will last for 30 seconds or until the recipients take enough damage to break the shield. This shield, like the one from Aspect Benefic, does not stack with Scholar shields. If you have a Scholar, you're going Diurnal Sect. At level 45, through, I believe, a job quest, you acquire Redraw, a 30 second cooldown, which allows you to, you guessed it, draw a new card if you got one you didn't like. 
I believe there is that it is possible to infinitely redraw because I believe there is a one second grace period between when you hit the redraw button and redraw goes on cooldown, causing your new card's duration to be 30 seconds but redraw goes on cooldown as soon as you use it, spending one second of its cooldown before you get your new card. <laughs> I think. We'll see when I get to the demonstrations. At level 46, you acquire Combust 2. This is the same level where you get the Combust Mastery trait. Combust 2 is a global cooldown instant cast spell that at level 60 costs 442 MP. It applies a potency 50 damage over time that lasts for 30 seconds. So it has a higher potency and a longer duration than Combust 1. So it's just better. At level 50, through a job quest, I believe, you get Nocturnal Sect. This is your Shield Sect. It also increases the potency of your healing magic by 15% instead of 10%. I personally prefer Nocturnal Sect for the stronger healing power. Some people prefer Diurnal Sect for the regens. <laughs> Personal preference, people. If I can be in Nocturnal Sect without being a detriment to my other healer, I will. <coughs> if you reactivate the sect you currently have on, it will just turn your sects off. And the final skill you acquire at level 50, which you just get for reaching level 50, is Sinastri. This is a 90 second cooldown, and it is honestly my favorite healer cooldown. It allows you to bond yourself to another party member. <laughs> Any party member you like. There's not much point in putting it on the tank, because you're going to be focusing on the tank. <laughs> but, say you're fighting a boss who has an attack where they will just randomly slap one of the DPS now and then for a pretty big chunk of damage, but the boss will then continue beating the tank's face really hard. <laughs> you throw some mastery on that DPS and continue healing the tank, because once activated, Sinastri gives you 20 seconds where 40% of all of your single target healing spells will be also applied to your bonded party member. <laughs> that means if you're throwing Benefic and Benefic 2 on the tank, that DPS you're bonded with is receiving 40% of the healing you're giving the tank. So you're healing them as a byproduct of doing your job anyway. <laughs> allowing you to save time, really, because you don't have to divide your cast times between two targets. Very, very useful. As you can see, Astrologian is largely about situational awareness, paying attention to what's going on, knowing what cards are useful, and using your skills in order to handle almost any situation that can arise. You have an emergency heal button on Essential Dignity. You have the ability to split your heal to gift some of your healing to another party member if you need to focus on the tank, but still heal somebody else. You have your cards, which are generally just a nice bonus. But now, let's go look at the healer role actions. All healers have the same role actions available to them, though which ones they take may vary. You may also have to take different ones depending on what duty you're going into. So, without further ado, once you've unlocked your role action slots, they're just available to you, and once you have learned your role actions, they're just available to you. At level 8, you learn Cleric Stance. This is a 90 second cooldown that, for the next 15 seconds, increases the potency of your attack magic by 5%. So, if you're a DPS loving healer, go nuts. At level 12, you acquire Break. This is a global cooldown spell with a 2.5 second cast time and no cost. Oh my gur, it's a free spell! Why wouldn't I use this all the time? Because it's potency 50. 
It's exceedingly weak. <laughs> it's mainly for its 20% heavy for 20 seconds. <laughs> As I'm sure there are going to be fights where you need to slow things down. <laughs> but I'm sure people will find uses for it. <laughs> At level 16, you acquire Protect, a global recast, 3 second cast time spell. It also has no cost, and has a 15 yom radius around either you or the targeted party member. It will apply a buff to all party members within that radius that lasts for 30 minutes. This buff reduces the physical and magical damage they take. This is a very useful roll action that I highly recommend you have as one of the ones you've selected. At level 20, you acquire Asuna, a global recast, one second cast spell. It costs 618 MP at level 60, and this spell, I say you absolutely must have, because it is your debuff remover. You can tell whether or not a debuff can be removed by whether or not there is a white line on top of its icon. If there is a white line, you are most likely going to want to Asuna that off. If there is not a white line, don't even waste the time trying. You're just burning MP and a global cooldown that could be better spent. At level 24, you acquire Lucid Dreaming. This is a 2 minute cooldown, which applies a 21 second MP regeneration, which also halves your current enmity. Its regen is, its MP refresh is a potency of 80. For Astrolotion and White Mage, this is a very useful ability, as their MP can run out fairly easily, especially if they're being, especially if they're not careful. If you're a more passive heal focused healer, you won't need it as often, but you may still need MP regenerations. At level 32, you learn Swift Cast, a 60 second recast ability. This applies a 10 second buff to you that will last until you cast a spell. What this buff does is it makes your next spell instant cast. Remember that 8 second recast on Ascend? Yeah, that's what this is for. Somebody gets their butt kicked, you pop Swift Cast and get them back on their feet. At level 36, you acquire Eye for an Eye. This is a 3 minute cooldown. It applies a buff to a target party member or pet that will last for 20 seconds. Any time they are attacked, there is a 20% chance that it will apply a 10 second debuff to the enemy, reducing the damage that enemy does by 10%. This is a useful ability. I don't have it cross-classed because the, or I don't have it as one of my roll actions because the ones I have on, I feel are more useful to me. I may regret it down the line. We'll see. At level 40, you get Largesse, a 90 second cooldown that gives you 20, a 20 second buff. While this buff is active, your healing magic is 20% more powerful. As you can probably guess, I'm a heal-focused healer, so Largess is a must for me. I would also highly recommend you have this, even if you're not a heal-focused healer, because if a fight is going poorly and you need to heal extra hard, having this can be awesome. At level 30, at level 44, you acquire Surecast, a 30-second recast ability, which 
can actually be very useful. <laughs> what this does is applies a 10 second buff. This buff will be consumed once you cast a spell. But while casting that spell, you cannot have it interrupted by receiving critical damage. <laughs> Being stunned, silenced, or put to sleep will still interrupt the spell. But <laughs> Surecast will also make you immune to knockback and draw-in effects, so the enemy can't forcibly move you. That doesn't mean that your spell will still cast if you move, it just means they can't move you by force. And finally, at level 48, you learn Rescue, a two and a half minute cooldown, which allows you to yank a party member to you. I assume you can't yank a party member who is currently bound in place. <laughs> now, you may be wondering why you'd want to yank a party member to you. Well, sometimes you might have a DPS who's being stupid and standing in AoEs. <laughs> you can use this to save their dumb butt. But with the abilities all covered, let's get to the demonstrations. <laughs> I'm going to start by showing the cards. So let's see what I draw. I drew a Spire. I don't need Spire. Hmm, that's a bull. Now, I'm going to see if I can infinitely redraw. Because if you can't, then undraw now actually has a good purpose. Before Stormblood, there was the ability to redraw without end. <laughs> so you could just constantly chain it and never lose your card. Yep, you can still infinite redraw. It's got a very, very tight window on it, though. <laughs> so we just got a spear, or a spire, which is useless. Go away. Next, let's show off Benefic. This is your basic heal spell. This is how strong it normally is. Oh, hey, I got a... I not only crit that spell, but I got an enhanced Benefic 2 proc. So, my Benefic 2 is now a guaranteed crit. Isn't that nice? That's most of my health. A tank is going to have significantly more than me, but that's still a good chunk of their health. Let's see if I can get a non-crit of this. Yeah, that's a non-crit. <laughs> now to burn this enhanced benefit too, so I can show a non-critical benefit too. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, crits are worth... Um, they used to be worth 50% more potency, but with the addition of direct hit, that was reduced. Direct hit and crit combined can produce some pretty big numbers, if you get them both at once. And you'll know if you have a direct hit crit combination, because it'll be a big number with two exclamation marks. Now, let's draw another card and see what we get. Oh, we got another bowl. I'm going to store that in my spread. See, now I have that just ready and waiting. Down in the bottom right, you can see my Astrologian gauge. This shows off your cards. It will show you how long the card is being held. It will show your uh, Royal Road buff towards the top there. Uh, let's see... I'm going to turn on Diurnal Sect, and I'm going to show you... Here's the regen for Aspected Benefic. That's pretty strong. I'm going to throw out an Aspected Helios now. And as you can see, the regens have combined and are worth a much larger number. Here is what a Suna looks like. Here is Protect. Here is Standard Helios. Now I'm going to go into Nocturnal Sect, and I'm going to use Swift Cast on Expected Helios. I now have a shield that's worth around two, around 3,000 HP. And now I have a shield that's worth around six, 7,000 HP instead. Now I'm going to draw a card. I got a bowl, so I'm going to Royal Road that. I now have an Enhanced Royal Road, so this bowl will now reduce the damage I take by 30% for the next 30 seconds, like so. Uh, I cannot demonstrate Sinastri, sadly. 
Now, take note of how much this heals me. I'm going to cast this a couple of times. As you can see, it heals me for around 82, 8400 MP. Now, activate Largess and cast it a couple more times. As you can see, I'm healing a noticeably larger amount. <laughs> so Largess is useful. I need to heal hard, and I need to do it for a fairly long... And I need to do it for a bit. Well, that's what Lightspeed is for. It removes two and a half seconds from your cast times, which, of course, means anything that takes two and a half seconds to cast is now instant cast for the next ten seconds. And they cost less. <coughs> now, to demonstrate the full glory of Essential Dignity, I'm going to make anyone afraid of heights uncomfortable. I apologize. But I need to jump off this tower in order to get to as little health as I can, so that I can then use Essential Dignity to recover as much health as possible. We Ow, my legs! <laughs> yeah, see that? That's 10,000 health restored. That's most of my health back in one shot. <laughs> if that had crit, it would have been effectively all of my health back in one shot. So, <laughs> yeah. Essential Dignity is your emergency heal, but it can also just be a boost to your heals, because you can throw it out immediately following a Benefic or Benefic 2. If the fight's been going on for a while, or you've been forced to do a lot of big healing and are starting to run low on MP, you can pop Lucid Dreaming to regenerate your MP. It's very helpful. And now the only thing left to do is demonstrate my attack spells. Because I'm level 60 and I have a trait that is from post-60, which is like Combust Mastery, only for Malefic, I can't show you Malefic, because I have Malefic too but I can at least show you the spells in effect. That's essentially what happens, regardless of which tier of the spell you have. An interesting thing to note is that the traits which replace your spells or abilities with their stronger versions will affect macros, because see those little gears on those icons? That means these are macros that I made. They contain a target of target syntax so that I can stay targeted on the tank forever and just attack the tank's target through the tank. This is because I'm a heal-focused healer. I spend most of my time healing and do DPSing when, I'm, when I feel it's safe to dedicate some cast times to it. If you wanted to, you could set a target of target syntax heal and simply be targeting the enemies and heal the enemy's target. There are lots of things you can do with macros, and they're very nice. But I've covered the effects of every ability and demonstrated anything that I can use on myself or an enemy. So I hope this video has been informative and helpful to you. If it hasn't, well, there's nothing I can do. I made the video and you didn't get anything out of it. Until my next video, goodbye.